Sig has a mixed track record on our show. We've not been shy about expressing our distaste for the P320, and yet, I love the 365 lineup and I carried one for years. We love the MCX Cane Brake and the 229 Legion. And despite having its flaws, I've always really liked the Virtus. And then SIG announced they were coming out with a new MCX lineup known as the Spear LT. Not all reviews are created equal. Sometimes the only way we can make a review happen is to Pony up and throw down the old credit card. The downside to that is the Spear LT is not cheap. In fact, as configured, it's just over $7,000. The benefit of paying for the gun, however, is that you can be as ruthlessly honest as you desire. So to skip ahead, is the Spear LT any good? Well, as it turns out, yeah. Let's do the damn thing. Let's do it. Man, a lot to talk about here. Yeah? A lot to talk about. We got a lot going on. We got a, we got a lot going on. There's a lot uh, to, to discuss. Some of you astute viewers at home may even be thinking right now, I think I might see a unicorn, at least a unicorn accessory that's on that, that gun. And uh, we're gonna talk about all that. So here's the deal, guys. Just some uh, quick opening thoughts before we, before we start diving in. We're looking at the Spear LT today, not so much the lineup, but really this particular one. There is a lot of interest in yeah. the Spear, right? Spear lineup, I should say, right now. Everything Spear. Largely because of the military contract, sure. right? So for those of you who don't know, military picked up the the bigger brother to this, uh -huh. the spear that's in like 277 Fury, I think yep. it is. And um, while I'm still very doubtful that that will actually uh, go to, to mass adoption in the military, uh, it was adopted and they picked up a contract for it, right? So <clears throat> that said, the Spear LT is the new and improved lineup uh, that would be comparable to the Virtus. Sure. This one in particular, because some of the specs that we will get into. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna dive into the Spear LT, go through, hey, what's new, any interesting things about it. And then because this gun is really quite unique in terms of setting it up because of a few different considerations, we're gonna spend probably about half the video really going through the kit list and some of the uh, unique uh, things that you will see on this gun. A little bit of full disclosure, so where did the gun come from? Did not come from SIG, um, <laughs> that'd be great, but uh, the gun did not come from SIG, it actually came from a shop in Florida called Volusia Top Gun. Correct. Um, they have both loaned us, and in this case, uh, sold us a few pieces of gear over the year, years, and um, they're good dudes, we like them. Uh, no affiliation other than uh, we've done some business with them. Yeah, the um, boys over there and Kevin, you know, yeah, it's yeah, our boys. Yeah, yeah. thanks for uh, boys. helping out and sourcing a gun that was very, very hard to find. Um, before we get into that, quick thanks to Segara Gear for sponsoring the video and uh, all the videos currently on the channel. They make the belts, uh, the one that I got around these hips, the one you get around them thick hips. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I don't know why I went there with it, but I did, and it, it was funny to me. Um, it hurt my feelings, so, <laughs> you fuck. <laughs> um, we've done a couple Segara videos, we will link 
link them uh, below, both on the Battle Wagon and the Emissary belts. And then this is the uh, Light Inner Velcro belt. I don't yep. know if that's what you got. Light Inner Velcro. But um, we'll link those below. Check it out. 1911 Syndicate is the code. We've got that link below as well, but that'll save you 10% off their belts. They're good guys. Go support them. A belt high five would be hilarious. <laughs> Where we like high five the belt just dicks, at the just... end of every Segura plug. <laughs> oh, and don't forget, guys, high five your belt, bros. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. All right, let's get into the Spear LT. And the first thing I'm going to tell you about this is despite the term light LT, which would mean what? Light. Lightweight, yeah. right? Or light, lightweight, whatever. This is not. Lightweight. Um, She's so, a thick bitch. So I'm going to say something, and then I, you don't freak out at home because I'm going to back up and clarify, which is this is a military-style rifle. Now, I get it. That's a loaded statement th these days because you're like, man, they're just making up shit in the media yeah. about assault style and military style. What's funny is they all know what you mean by that. They know what I mean They by know this. what you mean. Let me tell you specifically what I mean, though. When I say military style, what I am referring to is this is meant to be a robust, hard-use platform. Much like a 416 was yeah. a robust, hard-use platform, yeah. and everyone complains, a little heavy. Yeah, if you're looking for, like, the most thin, you know, s slim, it's like, cool, this isn't it. They can say sure. LT all they want. That doesn't mean it's LT. It's LT by comparison to the Virtus, because sure. the Virtus was a chunky girl. Um, yeah. With, uh, no offense to any of the th thick girls that watch the channel, um, but the Virtus <laughs> was, a, was, was a chunky girl. Um, you know, so by comparison, yes, this is. So an M, uh, a, a recap of the MCX lineup, because for those of you who it's either been a minute or you just don't really understand what is the MCX lineup of which the Spear LT is a part, here's what it is. Quick bullet points. AR-15 based firearm in terms of the controls. Sure. Mag okay. release, you know, manual bolt of arms release, is, manual trigger. Manual arms is going to okay. be like an AR, right? Okay. So pretty standard affair there. The difference is, is at the back, we are running on a 1913 uh, rail system, a.k.a. Yep. a pick rail in the back, right? So instead of an AR having a buffer tube and buffers and all that, um, it'll go, uh, you got to go like up. Um, I know, I was trying to... I don't have the leverage. Yeah. Um, you, well, let me let me see. Watch this. Watch this man strength, everyone. Chuck, bow. Look at that. There you go. You know? So, because the QD's on the other side, it's not folding all the way in. But you could shoot this gun all day from this position. You would look really stupid, but you could do it because there's no buffer tube that is a part of the system. So because of that, you can run a lot of different stocks. We will talk about the stock that I have on this and why. Other differences. It is a short stroke piston system. So unlike a DI gun that is... Um, Basically just blowing gas back in the system. Um, this is a short stroke piston versus an AK, which would be a long stroke piston. Um, and then the last big bullet point, it is a modular design. What I mean by that, so for those of you um, that have never really seen these, here's basically how it works. Uh, yeah, you can see it on both sides. So if you wanted to take this to a 300 blackout, okay? Yeah. All you gotta do, really simple, you need a barrel and a handguard, okay. which you can get from SIG, even though I don't think you can get them for the Spear LT quite yet, but okay. for like on the Virtus you could, right? And all you do is basically, you wind up popping off the handguard and then popping out the barrel. You will see this little cutout that is like right here. So it's tough to tell on camera, so you're gonna struggle to see it. Maybe we got some B-roll of it. But basically everything, this and this will all come off. This pick rail here still stays intact. Pop out the barrel, slap in a 300 blackout barrel, slap on the new handguard. We're in business on 300 blackout now. Takes yeah. a handful of minutes, right? Yep. Not bad. Uh, a, a relatively you know, savvy end user could do it on their own, right? So it is a very cool modular system that's very, very neat. The benefit of that, of course, would your optic did not have to come off, so I don't have to re-zero my optic, none of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now you will have to play around with like, uh, you're gonna have to re zero. You're zero okay. because you got a new round, but you get what I'm saying here, okay? Now, we talk about the LT lineup in particular. It comes in three calibers it comes in 556, 300 blackout, and an odd one that I didn't really see coming 762 by 39, aka the round of the AK 47. Uh, that one was unique, and I was like, wow, that's super cool. I just didn't see that coming. Sure. Right? Um, on the 556, there's two links. There's 16 inch and there's 11.5. This is an 11.5, also an SBR. Um, for those of you who are like, is it a pistol SBR? It's an SBR, that's a, a Midwest industry stock that we will wind up talking about. Um, so price on mine, just the base gun, right? Not obviously all the accessories, is 27.29. As my dog uh, just absolutely- Finn moves, dude. On his back. 
So mine, 2729 is the MSRP. Okay. And I will actually tell you, as we look at a kick-ass rainbow that's happening over here, sorry for the distraction, oh, everyone, dang. but you might want to just get that. We just pause and get that, maybe? Like, it's like damn. in your DNA to see that stuff, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Where's my, <laughs> where's my lucky? Where's my lucky rainbow? Man, that thing's popping. We got two. We got the double rainbow. No. Rainbow. Look, you can see one. Double rainbow. Two. What does it mean? This is incredible. Is there gold right there? We're going to find out. Look at this double rainbow. Come on, everyone. We got spear LTs. We got double rainbows happening. Remember what? what how good does life get? Look at that. Look at that. Spear LT with the double rainbow. First Come on. Bud Light and then forward and now. First Bud Light. <laughs> I mean, this is spectacular. Jake, if you want to tell me you're gay, you can just tell me, dude. Like, you really don't have to keep hiding it. We'll talk after the video. <laughs> <laughs> Hand guard, let's talk about it. It's thinned down compared to the Virtus. Is it thin? No, not really, but it's thinned down compared to the Virtus, and it is 100% manageable. Yep. You're not going to have any issues with the C clamp grip. It is solid. Seven side M lock, still pretty beefy. Uh, I'm a fan. I yeah. like it. Handguard's been solid. Also has the little cutout so you can adjust your piston. Yes, so the piston adjustment is up there. Right here. Contrary to what some people will tell you, which is that it's suppressed in unsuppressed settings, it's not. It's normal and it's adverse. So if you're running suppressed, you leave it on normal. And if you're just your gun's just completely fouled up, you switch it over to adverse. Cool. It's not suppressed, unsuppressed. The barrel slimmed down compared to the Virtus. Is it like a pencil thin barrel? No, but it is thinned down because the Virtus barrel was like still just a good an, size barrel, insanely though. beefy. The lower is now fully ambidextrous, which means it also has a right side bolt catch. Kind of cool. It is cool, and it's um, a little bit different design than the other ones that I've seen. Yeah. Uh, that was one thing that the Virtus didn't have that this one has, is that right side bolt catch. Um, it's solid. You push down on it, basically, when your mag goes in. Cool. It's good. No issues with it. Uh, the grip that uh, SIG has on this, their own branded grip, is actually solid. I like it. A little fat, but I like it. No issues. No complaints with it. They've got these reinforced QDs that are on the lower yep. receiver. I do like that they are now reinforced. I believe they're anti-rotation, even though I will tell you later why I don't actually run those QDs and I run them on the stock. They are anti-rotation. Yeah, there you go, right? Which I would expect with, again, a military-style weapon. Everyone relax at home. The spear is a military weapon. It's adopted Look, by a contract. Yeah, people are going to chill. We know what you're um, saying. The trigger. So this is SIG's own trigger. It's the Matchlight Duo Trigger. And... It's interesting. I've talked to multiple people about this, including our buddy uh, Kevin, who, who's kind of how we wound up sourcing the gun. Um, the trick, because he's got one of these two, and we're both of the same opinion, which is that trigger is perfectly adequate. Where it's like, is it as good as a Geisley or something? No. But it, it is, it, it, is it not good enough that I need to change it out? No, absolutely not. To me, it is perfectly adequate. And what I found, as strange as this sounds, is it's better shooting it than it is dry firing it. Sure. Shooting it, I can get on that damn trigger. Yeah. Like, God damn, that rainbow is insane right now. Dang, it's even... I mean, that's just nuts. Uh, no shit, guys. That's like the best rainbow I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, easily the best rainbow I've ever I mean, seen in, in my life. Damn. Huh. Uh, you know, I'm going to go find my lucky charms at the end of this video. It is now also compatible with AR-15 triggers. The Virtus was cool. not. You had cool. to have like a basically So I could drop a Geisley in there yeah, if I wanted yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, you cool. could. And that's a big upgrade, I think, by a lot of the Virtus owner's perspective. That was a big upgrade. Uh, the piston we talked about... Uh, of note, this gun is less gassy than the Virtus, and that was a big concern that I had going into this, and a question I had going is, how's the gas gonna be? Sure. Because the Virtus was very, very gassy. And you being lefty, you're a little more... I'm just sucking gas, bro. Yeah. You know, so, and that's not fun. So, it is... <clears throat> it is still a relatively gassy gun, so I'm going to advise, and we'll get into this when we start talking about the kit list. Hey, if you're going to do a suppressor on it, which of course you should because this is a society, do a low back pressure can, okay? Yeah. You're not going to want like a Surefire or something like that. It's just going to be way too much back pressure, and you're just going to get killed on gas. Mm -hmm. So low back pressure can. We will talk about that Griffin can as we go. Another thing I will tell you, the system has stayed shockingly clean. Um, yeah. it, it, it really is yeah. impressive to me that this gun is running as clean as it's running, which also is going to tell you, hey, it isn't severely overgassed anymore, and a low back pressure can is going to benefit the gun. Even more so. you're not getting gassed out. And I mean, it's really, a bit, I mean, I cleaned this for the first time yesterday, and uh, I was like, dude, there's just like nothing on the, the, the bolt. You know, I was, I was just like, yeah. 
Dude, Very little. That's, you know, in today's yeah. couple hundred rounds su suppressed, you know, it's like I haven't shot it unsuppressed. It's only been shot suppressed and it's really running clean. I'm very, very happy with that. Um, it does come with SIGS flash hider that's uh, designed for their SLX suppressor system. A note of advice, if you were gonna take that uh, muzzle device off and put on something different to put on the suppressor of your choice, expect to likely have some problems getting that muzzle device off. I don't know why they are opting to like, I think they're like rock set and just like torqued onto, I, I mean like a crazy level. Where like, I mean my gunsmiths over at Trajectory, they were worried they were gonna wind up fucking the barrel. Oh. Wow. They're, they're like, hey, just so you know, like we're getting close to like your, your barrel might just give, give out. Huh. And I've now known multiple people that have literally had to cut the damn thing off because they couldn't get it off. Which is um, not that's acceptable. Saying yeah, I mean, it's just like, hey, sick, just back off on the specs that you're torquing down these muzzle devices. I know you want us to use your cans, but it's like, I would still like to be able to get the muzzle device off if I have to without sure. literally taking it to like a giant vice. This is the factory stock that the gun comes with. Dude, look at that rainbow. I, I mean, guys, it's insane, man. I, I, I've I mean, never it's seen anything like that. Dude. It is distracting. I've never, if you can get that on like your Do you iPhone. take a picture with your phone? Yeah. I mean, it's- I've it's, never seen that. It's full on commercial level, and there's still the double one behind it. Yeah. The double one's still popping. But that main rainbow, I never seen anything like that. Dude, that's insanity. That's just insanity. It's pretty cool. So, okay, this is the stock uh, that the gun comes with if you get the SBR. That screw down. So it has a little push button here, which is really nice, which is what releases the side folding mechanism, okay? It works, it's a little tough when it's not on the, the gun. But uh, it's just a push button right here and then you can side fold it. Cool. This is a little, actually too minimalist for me and uh, we'll kind of go through why I went with that one from Midwest uh, as we go. Guys, if you're looking for any ways to support the channel, we would love it. Uh, go to 1911seneca.com. You can learn about what we do there. We're a real estate business. If you guys are looking for an easy way to stay up to date on what is happening in the world of real estate, which you should, because I yeah. like to think you're adults watching this channel, go sign up for the newsletter. We're doing it once a week, and uh, you're going to get some helpful info. You'll hear some cool client stories, because we actually do get to work with some pretty cool people, and we'll highlight them. We'll tell you about new releases. we got a new whiskey that's coming out only for 1911 Seneca clients, so go check all that stuff out. Patreon's also there if you guys just want to give us money. That's cool. Throw money at us like a stripper. Okay, let's start getting into how I kitted this out okay. and some considerations that I think you guys are probably going to want to make. Sorry about your knee there. Here's the deal. Setting up the Spear LT is a little bit more involved than your average AR because there's two big considerations that you got to make. A, <laughs> I've gone back and forth on it, but I'm going to say a gassy system even though somehow the action and everything's staying very clean. So I'm almost like, I don't even know what to think anymore. Sure. And then a heavy firearm with the emphasis on being a bit front heavy. Sure. Okay, so these two considerations are gonna dictate a lot of how you're gonna wanna kit this thing out. So let's start by talking about the suppressor. The suppressor is first thing I've owned from Griffin Armament. Yeah. Um, and this was a bit of a wild card. Uh, long story short, if I'm being perfectly candid, there was a couple other suppressors that were planned to go on this. A couple things wound up falling fell, falling through, and I'd uh, bet Griffin at SHOT Show, and I called him up, and I'm like, hey, would you guys have any interest in us throwing sure. a Griffin can on the spear? And they're like, yeah, you know, we'd, we'd be happy to uh, do something. So, um, so anyway, let's talk about it, because this, in my eyes, was a good opportunity to try something out that was new, that I think is lesser seen. I think it's like, yeah, we know about the Surefires and, and the Hucks and the Deaders. Sure. It's like, you know, kind of the big names. It's like Griffin's kind of in that mid-tier for me, and I don't uh -huh. mean that in any sort of negative way, just like, hey, they're not a micro brand, no. but they're not the big hitter, the Surefire, sure. even though, you know, we could debate That's the fair. Surefire thing. Um, they're kind of in that mid-tier, so I thought, hey, it's a good chance to test that out. So this particular model, this is the Dual Lock 5. It is a dedicated 5.56 suppressor, okay? So it's not a 30, 30 cal can that you can run 5.56. It's an actual 5.56 can. Six and a half inch can, which is about the standard, you know, normal yep. mid-tier, you know, suppressor length. Um, and this is their low back pressure can. That was one of the big requests that I had going into this is, hey, Griffin, I know that this gun is gonna have a tendency to be overgassed, so we really need to take that into consideration on which can we decide to put on this. So this, is, this was their advice on their low back pressure can to put on this. It has... Couple ways that it's gonna reduce the gas. One is what they call eco flow. Now, here's the deal. There's a lot of different ways. It's kind of like the term 2011, if, mm -hmm. I, if I may. Well, Staccato owns the term 2011, so everyone else has to go uh, high capacity 1911, uh, double stack 1911, uh, it's a high cap. 
flow through is a similar thing. Sure. Where we go, hey, look, that is a patented term by Huxworks, so we can't call that. So everyone's stuck going, what the hell do we call what essentially is the same technology? Yep. And you go, so they call it eco flow, right? It's cool. meant to be the same thing. Good so for them. this is going to be an eco flow technology or re designed to reduce back pressure. What's the benefit of that? Less gas in the shooter's face, uh, less wear and tear on your system, uh, less need to need to tune your gun to, for the can. You know, overall better shooting experience. Yes. Yeah, and especially for longevity of health of the shooter and the firearm. Um, it also has a vented front cap, so you will know, and we will try to yeah. show you uh, some B-roll here. Uh, there's these little slits right that here, are in this. Right here. So those are little vents right that are going to bleed off some of that gas, so you have less coming back at the shooter. It's also a flash hider end cap, so there's a built-in little flash hider here. We will uh, be shooting this as the sun uh, sets behind us uh, tonight, so you will be able to see real-time, hey, how is the actual flash reduction sure. of this? Um, and so, hey, we'll see, as will you guys at this point. Uh, this is their dual-lock QD system, so it's basically got two... Uh, types of lock. Basically, it's, you know, like a taper style, you know, thread pitch, if, if you will. So it's like, hey, you basically just thread the can onto the muzzle device. And then it has this little locking collar that you wind up dropping down, aka dual lock. Cool. Right? Two, two types of lock. I've had no issue with this carbon locking on. Nice. Um, it is not complicated. You just have to do the right sequence of things. It's only two things. You just need to do those in the right sequence of events, and your can's on. It's rock solid. There's no wobble There's no wiggle there. or wobble, yeah. Um, it, it's rock solid, you know? So no issue with their QD system. It's tubeless to shave a little bit of weight. Weight's coming in 11.8 ounces. Pretty good. Yeah. On a six and a half good. inch can. Yeah. It's good weight. Yep. Good weight. Especially for a stainless can. Okay. Yeah. So that's not even like titanium or anything. Yeah. You know, it's a stainless that's can. That's good weight. Tiny bit of ink and L that's built around the mount, right? Just to, uh, you know, ro robustness, yeah. I guess, of the mounting Take the system. Take abuse and the heat. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so I've, I've got to tell you, in terms of like, Overall shooter impression, for those of you who are like, you probably don't see a lot of reviews, or at least I haven't seen a lot of reviews on Griffin cans, I am very pleasantly surprised with the can. Cool. Um, it's caught me off guard, if I, if I can be perfectly honest with you, where I thought, I didn't think that can was gonna be that good. It's nice when that happens. It's great, yeah. it's the best, yeah. when you're just pleasantly surprised. Gas blowback is very minimal. And I've shot this indoors, like rapid fire, like as a lefty, very manageable. Um, sounds good. It's a thumpy tone on this. Yeah, there's a thud, not a crack. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. very low on the crack factor, very yep. high on the thud factor. Yep. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. So um, been quite pleasantly surprised. That's your like mini Griffin review. Next, let's talk about one that the astute viewers are like, yeah, that's what I'm here for. The EOTech OGL <laughs> stands for ungun laser. So a couple things on this. And um, so this is not currently on the market. Nope. Um, EOTech is targeting fourth quarter release of the mill LE version of this. And then very soon thereafter, the civilian variant, which will just, you know, obviously reduce the power a little bit. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, tell you this is not mine. It will literally get shipped back tomorrow. I, I will have had it for about a week. And um, you know, who knows what favors I had to turn in the back of an alley to get that thing here. A lot. Um, yeah, a you lot. know, I had to do what I had to do to get that thing here, but I think that you guys will enjoy really seeing a little bit about this given that the footage is only from SHOT Show at this point. So um, <clears throat> 2,200 bucks is what they're listing for the MSRP on the Mill LE variant. And I am very comfortable with that. That is such a good price. I'm very comfortable with yeah. it. Yeah, we just reviewed a civilian laser recently that is at that same price point. Yeah, so. and, um, and this is outstanding. So a couple quick hit lists and we'll show you a little bit of footage of it. So aluminum housing, winner. Perfect. Uh, seven ounce, so it is lightweight. Um, uh, they, they say this on their site, uh, similar in size to a deck of playing cards, just I guess as a visual reference wow. for you guys. Wow, it exactly is that. Yeah, it's about it's the size exactly of a deck, a deck of, of cards. cards. Yeah, you know, it's about the size of a deck of cards. Um, hmm. And uh, they did some really interesting design shit where they have all these cutouts yeah. that are throughout the housing that are designed to reduce the weight. You know, lightning cuts on a slide? It's that. Boom. Yeah, it's that, right? Of course, without going all the way through, obviously. Um, but yeah, so there's all these weight savings little slots. Everywhere. That, that keep the weight down. And I mean, it's very strategically done. It's very clever. I'm a big fan of it. Um, and with that said, I think we'll take you to some footage now showing you the various settings in terms of how you can run this. Okay, guys, quick uh, demo on the OGL. 
you got a lot of options on how you can run this and we'll just start with the visible laser so this will be the low power visible okay so that's the low visible setting high visible would be this quite a bit brighter and we're playing with lightsabers at this point okay next we'll go through the ir settings um so we'll have low high and then what some might call full power so here's what's cool so there's diffuser caps that are on the front of the unit if the diffuser caps are on you will get the following reticle versus if you take them off so this is with the diffuser cap on so with the diffuser caps on basically it turns it into the eotech reticle which I would have to assume that's by design. It's pretty neat, actually, that with the caps on, you get an EOTech reticle, and with them off, you just get a standard laser beam. That's low, we'll switch over to high. This will be full power, no diffuser cap, so just the straight laser. And we've got two illuminator settings with a really interesting feature. So built-in illuminator into the unit, and there is a sliding little toggle switch that's on top of the unit that you can use with your same little firing thumb there. And what it'll do is as you rotate it, it just takes the illuminator from flood to spot. So you would use flood if it's more of a close range, I'm trying to illuminate an area. And if I'm trying to PID something that's 200 yards out or whatever, you literally in about one second slide it over to spot and then you can push distance. Okay, final setting is pretty cool. It's a combination of both IR laser and the illuminator on at the same time. Show you guys what that looks like. Also of note, it's a separate zero for the illuminator. So you'll notice when it was on spot, it's a little bit off center to the right. Um, that's just because I didn't zero the illuminator. Um, but obviously IR and visible laser, those are slaves. So you just zero the green during the day and then you can zero the illuminator if that's something that you need to do at night. Uh, ambidextrous fire uh, button here, which is nice. Something like a D-ball where it's all the way over on this side for a lefty, very, very not friendly. So this being right up here. And so I'll tell you this, cause it really surprised me. This was coming in. I was like, I need to get pressure switches and everything. And truthfully, with the lightweight handguard being thinned down compared to the Virtus, you really don't need it. Nah. You can just straight up run the button. Yep. And, and I mean, like that's a big win. I love, I hate pressure pads, so that's a huge pro. I will avoid them if I can. Yep. You know, that's part of the reason I, I did the, the the light without the pressure pad as well. It's like, I got no cords running on the front end of my gun. I got no snack hazard, I got no nothing. No cords you know? is the best cords. So, uh, very cool. Okay, so moving on to the next piece, uh, we've got the HRT light, what do they call this? The uh, AWL, Advanced Weapon Light. So, this was covered at length in our rifle light series that's maybe two, three months old yep. at this point. So yeah, if you guys want the months. full breakdown, you can go get it. Uh, but the quick hit list, 285 bucks, very well priced on those. Um, it, Cause it comes with the, the mount battery. Everything. everything. Yeah, it comes with everything. It's a complete package at 285. Very comfortable with that price point on that light. Um, does come with the M-Lock mount, 1700 lumens, 90,000 candela. This is the compact size. They do have a bigger size. If you're just that guy that wants the big boy light. That's not me. I like compact lights, cool. but um, you know, if you want the full size, knock yourself out. And it has the ODA. That's really the biggest thing about this, the omnidirectional tail cap. So yep. basically any direction that you push, push this, activated, activated, forward, activated, from the six o'clock up, activated. So it's like, hey, um, it's meant so that you don't have to have pressure pads, but you can still run like a pressure pad sure. system just yeah. without the pressure pad itself. The con of it, which, you know, inevitably will, people will, will highlight, which I think is a fair con, is the, the risk of a white light negligent discharge. I think it's a fair point. When I'm out LARPing in the desert, yes, it's of no concern of mine. Yeah. Um, you know, depending on what you do for a career, yeah, you might say, hey, there's different considerations you have to make, or there might be times if you're running nods, you're like, dude, I completely take the battery out because I'm purely relying on my emitter, um, an illuminator that's on the emitter. So, you know, there's different ways to look at it. I really like those lights, which is why I threw it on there. Um, four grip. So this is from Ground Combat Solutions. That is an offshoot of Type A rifles. They are beginning to manufacture some smaller parts and components. And I'm a fan of that because they are a, a machine shop. That's yeah. really where they started before they got into doing full rifles. Cool thing about it, think of it like a kind of a chopped down CAC yep. foregrip. That's exactly what I think about. Yeah. And what's cool about, and this unscrews so that, um, you know, depending on if you're running an M-lock, you might have to access a little screw that's Oh, I thought that. it was for drugs. Um, well, you could do that or, oh. you know, um, I don't know, whatever. A know? last round in case shit hits the fan. Seven Skittles you could put in there, you sure. know. Um, but what's cool is it comes with, so you can either get a pick lock or a <laughs> pick lock, a uh, pick rail version of it or an M-lock version of it, or you can actually 
order one that comes with both mounts. So the basically the mount detaches from the actual vert grip and you could swap it over to pick rail if you wanted Super to. Super cool. I think that's a good Smart. design. Um, that's really cool. Well, it's like know. lights. Everything you want in the package comes with it. Yeah, I didn't write down the price on these. I don't, I, I, so I don't know. I don't know what the price is. Go to the Type A's Google website. They're, they're on there. You guys will figure it out. You're tech savvy around here. On the optic, really nothing to linger on. EOTech EXPS3 that is being run on a Unity riser, um, especially on a Nods oriented gun, which was part of the intent of this. Obviously went a little bit higher um, height on the, on the uh, optic there. I do, so I actually have a magnifier that I started out with the magnifier also on this. And immediately just because of weight and trying to get some weight down, I was like, eh, that magnifier is gonna go on when that magnifier needs to be on. Yeah. And it's gonna come off as soon as it doesn't need to be on. Sure. So Shave nice thing about the weight. magnifier is, you know, because they don't have to be zeroed and it's just on a little QD latch from, you know, the one that Unity sends. I mean, it's literally three seconds on and off. Sure. Piece of cake. So, hey, based on distances, yes, I'll throw a magnifier on that. Without, with the distances we're shooting 100 in and in today, no magnifier needed. Shave some weight down. Yep. Uh, the sling, as mentioned, uh, is from Sly Tactical. So that is the sling. The slings that we always run. It's We haven't uh, probably talked about these guys in quite a while, but re they really make um, phenomenal slings. This is a padded two-point uh, QD sling. It's really the only slings you should buy. Uh, it, it's literally the only slings that I own anymore to be candid with you. Uh, 1911 Syndicate, there's no spaces in that. Just plug that in. That saves you like 15% off their slings if you ever need it. Um, what's cool is, so I guess we'll talk about the stock and it kind of ties into the slings. So, so um, SIG did the reinforced QD slots. The problem that I have noticed, and it's part of why I really like this stock, is that because of the location of this, mm -hmm. um, I, because of just the way the stock and everything is, would wind up running a QD here and a QD up here. So okay. on the same side of the gun versus right. draping it over. The problem with that is your QD is getting mighty close to where my thumb's gonna access that safety. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's like you're, you're getting real close when this is right here to just like kind of jacking with your firing hand. So I actually wind up running it on this QD slot that's on the back of the stock. Okay, so the stock is from Midwest Industries. This is the second one of these alpha stocks that I have. And if I've got two, that probably means I like it. And <laughs> Shocking. I do like it. I actually like it a lot. Um, this is an odd choice on this gun. One that probably a lot of people are like, oh, okay, didn't see that. I was a little confused at first. I didn't see that coming. Yeah. Um, and I'll kind of tell you why. First of all, price on these, 290 bucks. So the gun is historically a little front heavy on, on the MCX lineup, right? Yeah. We got a piston, thicker hand guard, you know, nods, mm -hmm. cans, all that kind of stuff. One's a little front heavy. The problem with their stock is, you know, they call it like the Kate Moss stock, right? It's, you know, it's skin, that's what they call it. Yeah. I've never called it, I've never even heard it referred to as a Kate Moss. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's like the street term. For Isn't that, that a stock. actress? Yeah, it's like real skinny chick. Um, oh, because it's I, I, skinny stock. I'm tracking now. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Um, so the problem with the skinny stock uh, is that in a weird way, I actually want a little bit more weight back here to even out the weight distribution. Now, let me tell you, because some people are like, so you just want a heavier gun? Well, think about it like this. What do people do on their Nods helmets? Counterweight. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right? Yeah. Nods, uh, everything gets a little heavy here, right? So you go, yeah, you are adding overall weight, but yeah. you're actually balancing the system out. To more. sit on your head better. Yes. Right. And that's how I looked at this, because this stock winds up being roughly a pound heavier than the SIG stock. Oh. So it adds about a pound to the overall footprint of the gun, but about a pound in the direction that I want it going. Sure. Right? Yeah, get that ass down a little bit. You get where I'm going yeah, with it, right? Yeah. Like it actually creates better balance on the firearm itself. Smart. Right? Heavier, yes. Better balance though, and that's what I was going for. Um, it also gives you a ton of um, options in terms of like ride height of the cheek riser. Uh, you can adjust how, everything. Yeah, but, for this, or, for plate carriers and all yeah. kinds of stuff. One of the but things it does height. well, it gives me a QD back here, which is better than this QD here from my, my firing hand perspective. And here's the big one. This is the thing that everyone on these six complain about. You remember the first thing that you were like, oh, that's a problem. I don't. You went to rack the charging handle. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude, and it was hitting the uh, the stock, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. The, the hinge specifically. The hinge, yep, right. where this one, it clears the hinge. Well, it does, but here's the thing. This one's reversible. So you can completely switch the hinge to the other side. Which is why you did it on that side, because yes. you charge with your... So for me, the SIG OEM design, non-problem, because I'm charging on the right side of the gun. Yeah. So I clear the hinge that's over here. When you're charging on this side, 
hinge and you're just like, damn it. It's the first so, thing I did. So now this, that I remember. Yeah, it's completely modular and reversible. So you can Flip set this it. up completely lefty or righty. So you just swap the hinge to the other side of the gun. Smart. So again, for a righty, yeah. this stock makes all the sense in the world, dude. Give it to him. Like it really makes a lot of sense. Very this smart. Was, it's not like that stock was designed. I mean, it was designed for AKs, but it works incredibly well on the MCX as it turns out. So let's hit you with some final thoughts here as we, as we wrap this up. Um, can I set this right here? Sure, yeah. Cool. Guys, it's a home run. I'm actually pleased to be able to come here today where we've had a few SIG videos where we're like, man, you know, we kind of sent it on that one. Um, this damn thing's a home run, man. Cool. Uh, like, I am very happy with this. It shoots incredibly well. It is very nice to shoot. Yep. Very, very nice very shooting clean, firearm. Good recoil and Runs very clean. I've had zero malfunctions total None. now. As of today, we're at about a thousand rounds on this. This is a very short timetable, about two weeks for us to turn around this review, which for us is very, very quick. Which most people won't shoot a thousand rounds in three months so yeah um on the cool factor scale hot damn that's a good looking rifle <laughs> it's like such a cool rifle i mean that is a good looking rifle yeah. right especially with that ogl on it right now like shit son yep so let me uh just quick final uh, announcement so when or announcement when sig when the military contract was announced i thought that made no sense um on the big boy spear with the round that was heavier with less capacitors like this doesn't make any sense um I think this is what they should have picked. This makes way more sense. This makes all of the sense. Way of, more sense. The spear made sense from a level of some modularity and some benefits and to be able to set them up different ways. There, there was some sense made of it. Sure. The caliber, the ammo, like all that stuff didn't make any sense. So this solves that and gives you all the benefits of, I can take this gun, I can set it up for 300 blackout, I can set it up for 5.56 as an SBR or 16 inch gun, right? All it is is barrel and handguard changes. Yeah. yeah. So you go like, hey, Army and SIG, like this was your winner. Yeah, that did a good job. Like this was your winner, it's like a, right here. Very cool rifle. Like, I mean, truly it checks the box that for me, the military is looking for right now, which is we we just need a modernized AR-15. Sure. Not that that's dated, but you know, hey, if that's what they're what interested saying. in, hey, there's your modernized system. Yeah. Like that's it, you know? It, it, and cool. again, for those of you who are like, oh, he's just kissing six ass or whatever. It's like, first of all, we got a track record of not doing that. Third of <laughs> Literally all, the opposite. Yeah, third of all, I, I paid for this gun. Like I'm in this gun for quite a bit of money, you yeah. know? So it's like, no, 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 like this is my cash on the line here. Yeah, because if it wasn't running good, you'd sell it. 100%. Yeah. Right. And, and it's just like, winner. Yeah. That's cool. Again, it's one of those things where you go in with maybe some preconceived notions. We've had a bad track record with SIG. To be really pleasantly surprised is nice. I, I mean, I'm And it deserves very, it. I'm very happy with The rounds game. I've shot through it, dude, that gun shoots nice. I'm and I shot it happy. several weeks ago when you first got it. I shot it two weeks ago. I've shot it this week. Like, I've a handful of times. Yeah. Like, very, very happy with it. Uh, it. It's a big recommend for me. I won't be surprised if you see this on the yearly uh, top 10 list at the end of the year. I think it's likely Ooh, that you probably already, will. huh, in May? I'm just taking a guess. That's that's one of the more exciting guns I've shot this year. Okay. Um, you know, so, hey, take that for what it is. So, anyway, guys, uh, quick uh, thank you to FLP as we wrap up the show here. Firearms Legal Protection. They are concealed carry slash self-defense insurance. If you are in a legally justified self-defense scenario, whether it's with a firearm a rock, whatever it is, they will cover you. Uh, unlimited attorney fees. Yes. You make a little mess in your house because, you know, that's what happens, right? You start leaking a little bit, right? Um, they're going to send a dude to clean it up. Yeah, so someone's got to pay that dude. Someone's got to pay that dude. And uh, they got several different packages. I have the traveling package that also includes a, a spouse, right? Because I have a spouse and I travel. Sure. You have the single man package. Yeah. And our, uh, our discount code, which is 1911 syndicate, all lowercase. Just 1911. Just 1911. Easy. My bad. Sorry, guys. Um, just 1911 will save you about a third off, which is a, a good savings. Oh, it winds up being like 10 so. bucks a month if you guys just want the yeah. budget one. Like, yeah. it's it's very cheap. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's good stuff to have. So, anyway, th yep. thank those guys for that. And, um, yeah, man. Cool. That's it. This is a fun review to do and yeah i'm glad we got to do this i'm excited to have someone teach me about it because you know i haven't haven't looked into these too much I'm, i think you did a great job and uh it's nice that the gun is actually thanks mixed. and i did do a great job you did no you yeah. did you did uh, on camera you did a very good job well yeah. i like the gun a lot so anyway guys we will leave it there comment if you got anything that you need and hell if you're not subscribed to the channel give that a freaking go while you're at it too see you guys next time